Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Real Talk. It's Real Talk for Real Estate Investors. Uh, Chris Sanino here with Mark Woodring, episode 80, right? 80. Four score. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking about, uh, if you saw the vlog, we're going to be talking about um, why real estate is the gift that keeps on giving. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that we've talked about it uh, in other series, you know, just almost hammering at home about how real estate uh, is so much different than other investments. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people right now uh, with uncertainties, 401ks, uh, different sort of investments. Um, but real estate is, you know, I mean, some of the things that we just want to talk about is what makes it so much different. Mm, you know right. I mean, like um, the fact that you own a hard asset, you know, the fact that you own a piece of property and year over year that is going to hopefully continue to perform you know then you add the fact that you're paying your mortgage and making cash flow so we'll definitely dive into some examples later in the uh, podcast on that but again just just buying a piece of property holding it over time you know, I mean it should should uh, you know give you an asset that performs uh, over time as well right right so you mentioned passive income that's one of the things that's on our list um, you know, it's an interesting thing. Actually, one of the main reasons why I got into real estate investing. So to, to take a to put on a different hat for a second to right. just talk about just my experience and why I'm in it. Um, it was like an absolute aha moment. Like, why isn't everybody doing this sure. type thing? Um, when I realized that I could be working a nine to five, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and then somewhere else, sure, there's I'm earning a dividend and I'm earning interest and I'm earning all these other things. Yeah. Um, that's tangible. Like I can see it in my bank account. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally felt like, and I was in stocks for a while, right? We we all, I think everybody's had some sort of four hundred one k or IRA or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one thing to have to like log into an app and like see money that you can't touch, otherwise you're going to take a penalty on, and all of these things. It's it's a great strategy. I think it's perfect for a lot of people. I also think that if you if you're in real estate investing, you should diversify into stocks. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be able to just pull up my bank account <laughs> and move over to my business account and see that, oh, my tenant pay rent this month, yep. right? And then also know that the market's doing some cool things and I'm appreciating. Like it's passive, right? Mm-hmm. And it's growing in value and I can watch that happen. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, that kind of actually goes over lots of things we're talking about here. But sure. um, I know for me, like that was just a big thing. Like, oh, this is real. And it's would you say hand. that, like, you know, for our for our new investors, like, would you say that it's it's um, it's patience? You know yeah. what I mean, it's 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 the time that you have to uh, purchase that home. And so, say, like, the rent is mm-hmm. let's just say a thousand dollars a month, and that you're cash flowing two hundred, two fifty, or something like that. Just small amounts that may not look like you just won the lottery, right? But the patience of doing it and replicating that over and over again and then using a company like ours that does all the work for you, right? We acquire the property, we rehab the property, uh, your team rents the property mm-hmm. and then and then we sell the property basically, here are the keys, right? right? And so you don't have to reinvent anything, but like would you say that like, you know, for that first investor, like, you know, the patience is the virtue? Yeah, there is definitely a level of patience there. Um, but I would follow up with a different P perspective. Right. Um, patience is important. But patience is important in anything, right? Sure. Um, I mean, you have to be patient in a McDonald's drive through right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes more than others, right. right? Nowadays with the hiring, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but perspective of that as sure. well. Um, you know, you mentioned a thousand dollar rental. If you net uh, two hundred fifty, meaning after expenses, that's what you bring home. That's what you see that hits your balance sheet. Right. Um, for me, and the conversation I have with a lot of my clients too, in IPM, and that we have in some capacity with, uh, we talk about passive income um, here at Freedom, um, is that two hundred fifty dollars equates to you working? That's two hundred fifty dollars a month. Is what we're talking about. That equates to you working a twenty-five dollar per hour job, uh, an extra ten dollars that you didn't have to work for, mm-hmm. or ten hours, right? Right. So I mean, you do that once, awesome. Do that two times, sweet. Do that ten, right? Fifteen times, or even put your that 
$250 a month position, uh, increase the rents every year a little bit, that 250 becomes 300 right. next year. Um, you get a really awesome tenant who um, was like, oh, yeah, the market's increased. Sure, I'll pay an extra $200 a month. I have no problem with that. Well, now you're not looking at 250 You're looking at 450 Right. Um, and then you're moving into a whole different game. Uh, our, our people that are in um, – uh, apartments mm -hmm. like uh, multifamilies, anything two units or more, um, you've seen that exponentially increase, right? right? So we're talking about a single family home running a thousand dollars. I know we have a couple of duplexes under contract right now that are this. I mean, they're going to get better returns because they're not talking about two fifty. We're talking about five hundred, six hundred dollars a month, right? No, and that that is uh, amazing to think about. Is the 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 way that you look at it through that lens is. Um, a couple hundred dollars may not seem like a lot, but I mean, that could be your Hulu bill, your right. cable, your phone right. that are now paid that you don't have to pay. And so um, it is about getting that first one started. And then, like you said, you start moving to, uh, I know that when I'm like working and, and coaching through clients is, you know, where do you want to be? you know, setting yourself up right. um, for that five-year plan. How many properties do you think that you can purchase in the five years? And I know that one of the things that we had like given a, a tidbit on and what we were going to discuss were, were rates and, and how that affects. Um, I know that for the numbers that we send out, um, we're trying to anticipate what lending looks like mm. to you know gauge what a mortgage would look like. And so that when we put together that pro forma, those should be fairly accurate to the cash flow that you're gonna get. And so as interest rates start ticking up, you know, six, seven, maybe even eight, mm -hmm. they're not historical highs. I mean, they've been higher 20, 30 years ago, right? Right, a lot. And so, and people were still buying houses then. So it's not that people aren't gonna buy. I think what they're looking at is, you know, how, how are they gonna be protected in the event that things keep going up? Right. You know, and I think we've talked about this in other podcasts and blog is, well, buy now. Because, I mean, what if it does go higher? You know what I mean? Buy now. Protect yourself now. These are the cash flow numbers. Um, and later in the, the episode here, I'll dive into two particular properties that we have where the cash flows are either very close to 500 on a single family home or over 500 on a single family home at the current market rates. Right. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, so you're talking about a 9% cap rate single family home. Where interest rates are at 7%. Yeah, which means that in a year, right. once you've been paying on your mortgage for right. you know, eight months to 12 months, and uh, the, the buyer, the investor decides to refinance because the rates might go back down, or the, what goes up must come down at some right. capacity. Um, so do you refinance? You're still getting 500 plus yep. a month, but now you have less interest that you're having to pay on the front end. Exactly. I mean, and it's that's... not, I mean, what we're hinting at, it's not bad time to buy right it's actually there's no time like the present and that's that's what i was getting at is is when, when we're talking about you know the christmas season the gift that keeps on giving exactly what you alluded to let's just say three years right so you're, you're making five hundred dollars on this house for three years the interest rates go from eight down to four and a half five yeah you know i mean they just drop in half you're right. I mean, you're now talking about refinancing that and having a mortgage payment that's significantly hundreds of dollars of less. Three years from now, you're also having hopefully more on your rent. You might have a house that's bringing in $1,000 a month. Right. One property. Yeah, I mean, whereas if you wait this out, now what, right? Yeah, you bought that house right. at four and a half percent, but what you just left on the table was the equity that built over those three years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the fact of like a proven property that brings in rent, and and having that property that uh, has now given you, you know, X Y Z dollars over thirty six months. Right, right. So, I mean, this kind of you were talking there, and it kind of brought out a couple ideas. Sure. Um, you know, we've we've done a lot of these podcasts and these vlogs together. Um, we've been on a couple other events and where we've talked about these types of things. Um, 
But one thing that I don't know if we really touched on is – well, we touched on in some capacity. Um, there's so many different ways to invest in real estate too. So we're talking specifically about buying rental real estate. Right. Um, not other avenues of passive passive investing in real estate. Um, but when it comes to buying, there's one avenue that I don't think that we've talked about a lot and in depth, but it's a good opportunity now. I think that our, some of our buyers, I don't know if they know or they've thought of this, but um, – there's been a bit of a baby boom because of COVID, right? Mm. What better gift for newborn or one, two, three year old child than to be somehow involved in owning real estate that they get to reap the rewards of eighteen years from now? Yeah, right. I've like heard lots of trust or something. I've heard like lots that, of stories but... of investors building trust post COVID, um, buying real estate, putting in that trust. Mm. Um, they they refinance and they still manage it as if you know I mean the trust manages it but um, as if it's their own personal asset but right. their child their children are the beneficiaries so we talk about generational wealth that's one strategy that if you personally aren't interested right now because you're kind of nervous about a couple things lock it up in something as secure like a trust right. and then now you're playing an eighteen year game twenty year game right. so um, I forget if you sell it you sell it. Right. But you're still in a good position in that trust that you can then buy again. I mean, we talk about equity, like sure. that that that's going to increase value there, and it's protected, and it's something that your children and your children's children can take advantage of. Sure, and I know that uh, you know. I mean, we don't have the crystal ball, and by <laughs> by no means am I making a a prediction. But um, year over year, real estate continues to perform. Correct. Yeah, I mean it it does, and. So you buy a property, even if the market crashes, let's just say worst case scenario, your house goes, you know, down less than what you bought it for. Now that would be worst case scenario and Dayton is a very safe market. Cincinnati is a very safe market. I don't think we've seen that for quite some time, but let's just say in the event that it does go down again, this is a buy and hold strategy. Like Mm -hmm. you said, I mean, if you're talking about an 18 year plan for a, for a child, I mean, if you look at a house, and and there were two or three that I looked at prior to to coming in to do the the, uh, the show today, was you know what did these sell for twenty years ago? Right. I mean, they're almost double in value. Mm-hmm. I mean, so think of that eighteen year game, right? Right. Where you buy a property, and again, I'm not saying that properties in twenty years are going to double. Double, right? But they're gonna go up. You right. Know, well, I mean, gonna go up. yeah. And if they don't, do, and when I say eighteen years, I'm just thinking of a child, you know, sure, sure, yeah. to that maturing to that age. The reality is, like most people that have those types of trust don't have the same assets in them in ten years. Yeah, you know, they'll hold them for five to ten. They'll 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 milk it for as much equity as they can. They'll gauge the market. They'll have a bump like we did this year. Yeah, and they're like, oh, now's a good time to sell it for more for double. Yeah. Um, Perfect example is my house doubled in value in the last six years, right? right. I mean, can't imagine if that was in some sort of high interest, mm-hmm. you know, yielded uh, trust or something that would allow it to appreciate even more, right? Uh, so that's the kind of the strategy I was thinking about there. But you're absolutely right. 20 years ago, now granted, I wasn't in real estate in 20, 20 years ago. Right. <laughs> but 20 years ago, like, the, the general value was significantly less. Interest rates were fairly similar mm-hmm. from what I can tell. Um market trends are what they are. I yeah. mean, we could be increasing significantly over the next few years. Um, even in areas where the interest rates are high, like right. the value is still stabilized. It may dip a little bit, but um, it bounces. It's just like the stock market. You think Tesla's worth what it was three years ago? No, it's, it's fluctuated quite a bit, right? Mm-hmm. No, Absolutely. Yeah, I just keep thinking about you know all all the gifts they keep on giving. You know what I mean, like it's just it's just with real estate, it, it's you know, um, you know because I, I've even talked to um, you know like say Randy or somebody like mm-hmm. that, uh, yeah, a CPA, uh, very intelligent. And when you talk to them about oh well, I want to do some buy and some flips, and they're like, well, that's that's great, but you know, you you may make more money up front on the buy and the flip, but then what do you have? Yeah, you know, I mean, you you have taxes due on the money that you pay, you know, made. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you you know get creative in how you roll things over. Whereas, like you know, buying properties, there's tax advantages to that. Um, you know, there's tax advantages on any repairs that you make. Um, 
And and we just talked about a few minutes ago. It's a it's a slow grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, I, I don't I you know my entire time here and in real estate, I've never seen somebody buy ten properties at once. Mm, no. Yeah, you know I mean, like you know, the, even the wealthiest of wealthy that you know may have worked for Google and yeah. know, cashed out their <laughs> stock options, and you know, they still don't buy ten yeah, properties. I think at the once. closest we got was maybe somebody that bought four or no, I bought three, but they bought them like. They put one under contract, and right. then they put like two weeks later they put another one, and it was a ten thirty one. So they had like an extra restriction. Right. That they had to use the utilize the cash, have it claimed. Right. So they, like literally like every two and a half to three weeks they put another one under contract right. so that we could claim the entire fund. Right. Um, but even then, like super super rare. Um, usually people are like buying like the spring and then end of summer or fall, right? So ten one ten at once is a bit. Interesting. I'd like to see that. Yeah, right. I think we might have actually a client IPM that is pretty close to that. He'll probably buy five, five or six properties at once. Oh, nice. But a lot of times, like we're talking about, he's flipping two, right. he's wholesaling one or two, and then he's making three into a rental. Like it's a different strategy right. than what we do. Um, but as far as our clients, yeah, no, sure. We're, we're, talk, we're talking about one or two. And you and you touched on IPM, and and I I told you I was gonna you know, bring this back in just to (laughs) kind of like, you know, for maybe a first time watcher or somebody who, um, you know, is just trying to find out a little bit more about freedom real estate. And uh, with our turnkey product, and we talked about the acquisition, the renovation, um, you know, getting it rented and then ready for sale is that, you know, the properties that we sell now, right, are a little bit different, right? Yeah, yeah. So if we were having this conversation this time last year, um, we would be talking about, um, I think we even called them promised rents. Right. I think at one point that was part of the sales pro forma is that if a property wasn't rented, there was some sort of rent guarantee that we called promised rents. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we don't really like lingo like that because, you know, real estate is an interesting monster sometimes. But um, what you're alluding to is um, this year we've made some pretty serious changes on how we do business here at Freedom Real Estate Group. And one of them um, is revolving around not just product quality, but actually selling selling the product we promised. Right. Um, and how our clients, the buyers, right. um, our investors, um, how they receive and, um, you know, um, uh, not just receive the property, but their experience once they buy the property. Right. Um, that that big the big one of the big changes. So there's been many, but the biggest one, at least that's relevant for this conversation, is we don't sell properties here at Freedom Real Estate Group unless uh, until they're rented, right? And um, rented, moved in, and already performing the way they are in the pro forma. Right. So I mean, the the obvious, uh, you know, great part of that is that. When you close on the property, mm-hmm. you're instantly cash flowing like next month. Correct. Or, you know what I mean? Because you're already in the process of doing this. Do you see any other benefits besides, you know, that obvious benefit of, of like, here you go. You are already cash flowing. Um, yeah, there's lots of benefits. Um like does it help work out any bugs, you know, or, or yeah, you know, help yeah. So in the future. Or- yeah, so um, internally, you know, so first off, let me just kind of rewind just a little bit. Um, you know, la- early, the beginning of the year, and this is more like more IPM centric, I think. Uh, it kind of bled over to freedom because we're all the same, you know, um, mm-hmm. family of companies. So mm-hmm. product matters throughout the entire pipeline here. Um, we started really analyzing our buyer experience, right? Um, from the very, very front end of the funnel all the way through living in IPM afterward um, or any other PM company if they choose not to be with independence, right? Sure. Um, and in that um, that experience and, and, and researching how our buyers are, are feeling, essentially their emotion, um, we had several aha and revelations, right? Um, the big one was that when we sell a product, we were realizing that there were certain things that – were not um, performing the way they should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, so by renting properties first, that does a couple things. Um, first, we're able to work out any 
issues at the property. So we, we go through a strenuous inspection process in house before we even market a property for rent, right. let alone before we list it for sale, right? Sure. Um, so it goes through multiple double checks, multiple quality assurance um, funnels and all that to try to make sure the property is as good as it possibly can be before we sell it. Sure. Um, even before, actually before we rent it even. Um, by renting it before we sell it, mm -hmm. that allows um, us as an IPM to be in there with a resident, um, already kind of set the tone of how that relationship is going to go. It gives us a little time while we still own it right. to work out any maintenance issues or um, if, there, if for some reason the city comes back and there's an issue with something on uh, a tenant moving in or for for me, if there's Section 8 repairs that need to happen, sure. uh, if there happens to be a Section 8 agency, they have strict rules on what the property needs to perform. Sure. Uh, so it gives us an opportunity to get all of that worked out while we still own it, right? Mm -hmm. So that means it's on us. It's our expense. It's our loss yep. for our client's benefit, our, our buyer's benefit. Exactly. Um, the other big thing is – we try the market, we try to get top market rates, we finagle, we negotiate sure. on our dime. Mm -hmm. Whereas previously, sometimes that would happen and we would set a pro forma and we say, hey, rents are $1,000, expect this. And then we have to negotiate and all of a sudden rent's nine fifty. Right. Right. Well, that's not winning, right? Exactly. It's better than the rent being zero, right? But it's not winning because now the client's losing $50 a month. Right. And cash flow, right? So we take that, right? We as an organization, I'm talking from Freedom Real Estate Group, uh, we take that holding that for you as our buyers. So that way when we're, when we're confident the property is going to perform, right, and it's rented and it's cash flowing and there's no work orders coming in and everything's flowing fine, the tenants are happy, property mm -hmm. looks great, um, that's when we present it. Hey. This property is available. Yep. If you would like to be a part of this, take this opportunity. Here are the numbers. Um, I think that's been a very major uplift and a bit of a like a um, a revelation, if you will, sure. to how we how we present. Do our, you feel our that the uh, the investor experience, you know, is is that they feel better? You know, uh, like hey, you know, uh, yeah. John Smith. This house is rented. Yeah, you know I mean, and and you know, does can you you know we've only been doing this, I guess, for a few months. Right. Can you kind of see that that energy is a little bit different, and that the the member experience uh, is better? Yeah. So, like as you said, it's kind of early. I mean, we've been doing it for a little more than a quarter. Uh, we're actually we're about ha uh, a little more halfway through quarter two mm -hmm. of doing this. Um, so the data is still fresh. Like I don't know if we have enough to say yes, definitely. But right. I will say that in the few conversations that we've had with owners after they've been on board IPM, mm -hmm. um, it's been generally a different type of conversation. It's more of a how's my tenant conversation. Right. Um, and then I'll just clarity on like when rent going to be paid to me, those types of conversations versus – what are we doing for leasing? What are we thinking for rent? Are we thinking about this? Have you talked mm -hmm. to Freedom about that? Like it's a little bit more of a – and we're still engaged, the same level of conversation, but the, the conversation is um, less defensive. Mm -hmm. It's more um, – uh, I don't know the word. Yeah, it's less defensive is the way I want to put it. Right. Um, it's not a on-my-toes situation. Sure. Um, they're not dug in like – trying to combat and trying to figure out they're sure. trying to be like okay hey we're in a winning situation now um what can i expect and that's much easier for us to manage on our end right and i know for i'm pretty confident that if we would talk to those same buyers six months from now sure um they're going to feel much better about the product they purchased and more inclined probably to buy more um i do know that there is one client that is currently under contract um, for a property in Dayton, mm -hmm. Dayton that was one of the first buyers when we started doing this mm -hmm. um, a few months ago. Okay. Um, and the fact that he's already buying another one just a couple months later makes me super happy. <laughs> yeah, no, believe me. As far as like on you know the the Freg side or the Freedom Real Estate Group side, you know, speaking to investors. You, you nailed it where we're not talking about we anticipate the rent. Right. 
like these are these are hard rent numbers this is what's actually coming in so these are the performance numbers so you know there's investors that still use maybe different metrics as to how they look at how a property performs um, you know any capex numbers that they may substitute over what we do and, and that's okay I mean but at the end of the day here's here's the cost of the house right yeah I mean and and we're doing market rent you know what I mean, there are companies out there that, you know, either have you bid on a house. You might be overbidding on a house. Uh, there's companies out there that, that may even set it high and expect you to pay differences on it. Um, whereas, like, we're, we're literally selling you something that's market rent mm-hmm. or, I mean, uh, you know, value to mm-hmm. the market. And then these rents, I think you talked about it earlier as well. We're trying to get higher than we think. Um, like, so for example, one, the one that I brought with me, this is, this is our property on Prosser. Mm-hmm. It's in uh, Cincinnati. When we originally put in the pro forma, we put in 1300 for the rent and this property is actually performing at 1350. Right. Um, because it's a great neighborhood, great area. The rehab was done, you know, very well. It's kind of like an open house. Um, this property is a, is a 9.2 cap. Um, with almost a 17% cash on cash. And like I had talked about earlier, this is when we're looking at, that's at the current interest rate. Right. So this property, um, like I said, is $1,350. So it is bringing in uh, $455. So let's just call it $450 per month rent after expenses are paid. Right. Like, with the current interest with rate. With the current interest rate. Correct. So, I mean, if you drop the interest rate in half, you know, and, and just going through the, the quick numbers on what the difference in your mortgage would be, you're looking at a cap rate that's almost 15 or 16 percent and a cash on cash at 25 or more percent. Right. I mean, that's insane. Like if two years ago when interest rates were low and the market was going crazy, if I would have came to you and said, hey, Chris, I have a property that's cash flowing at $700 a month. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, a single family home. A single family home, yeah. cash flowing for $700 a month. The cap rate is 16% and the cash on cash is 25%. How fast do you think you would be signing anything? like? Well, at first I'd probably try to laugh you out the door. <laughs> right? I'd be like, that's not real. That's not realistic, man. What, but, are you, what are you doing? I think you got a decimal place wrong in your pro forma. Exactly. Um, but as soon as you showed me, and I'd be like, absolutely. Where can I right. sign? Here's my here's my wallet. And so that's, that's kind of like what we're talking about with this gift that keeps on giving is because, you know, although markets change and rates change, these are still performing. They're, they're right. real. Um, I'm not saying that like you need to run out and buy as much investments as you can. Do your homework, obviously, but 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 these are real, and they may not be recession proof because there's right. some things, obviously, you know, like during COVID, <laughs> you know, a lot of people were worried about like whether rents were even going to get paid. Right. Um, so I mean, those are real fears. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to discount those at all, but. Uh, you know, there, there's obviously some things that we can do to mitigate losses and things like that when right. and if that ever comes around. Um, but, I mean, you know, hopefully we're through the woods on, on right. most of that stuff. But, you know, these are things that um, you should maybe consider adding to your portfolio um, as something that can be a either generational wealth, like as you touched on, um, something that you can add for, for just, I mean... Gosh, even even if this is just money to replace uh, for vacation, right? Know, once a year, like you weren't able to go on vacations during COVID lockdowns and things like that, you know, if you're bringing in four hundred fifty bucks a month, you can either put it back towards the mortgage and buy it down, right. or literally just put it in a fund. Yeah, just and set aside ten fifteen percent of your cash after yeah. expenses, and then you take your wife and kids on a good vacation. Exactly. Every year. Yeah, I mean, and that's like literally a strategy that I have when I'm investing because um, right. I do both passive, like strictly passive and rentals. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's a good strategy to have. Uh, the other thing, like as you were talking, um, like rents are going to go up a little bit. Right. Right. Um, so one of the things like with the new process of us renting them before we even list them for sale, um, we – the way we comp rents is very, very involved. Right. Um, so for those that are like maybe new to our podcast or new to our company and you're just kind of toe dipping into real estate, 
you know, we have set or well, six companies, six. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm saying six. There yeah. might be seven. No, yeah. By t- there might be another yeah, one they, while they we're in this meeting. One this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so six companies um, doing all sorts of things in real estate, from acquisitions to dispositions to um, large scale syndications for apartments and debt funds and all, all the whole the whole kit caboodle. Right. Um, Freedom Real Estate is all encompassing of all of that. Um. So when we were going through this change, I mentioned all that to say, um, I our company IPM, our sub company or department, as mm-hmm. what I'm going to call it, um, mm-hmm. we weren't involved in the acquisitions end of it at all. Right. Really. I mean, every now and then, I might get a message that says, "Hey, curious about rents on this," you know. Right. Um, but most of the time, our acquisitions guys are just making decisions on just sheet numbers, a spreadsheet on whether or not something was going to buy. Now, mostly because of this type of decision, almost every single one mm-hmm. is thoroughly vetted with a very strict right. rent procedure um, that's been approved by us mm-hmm. in some capacity. And the ones that are like, mm, I'm going to come on the fence about this, then we're brought in. Yep. Um, and then those rents are also checked periodically throughout the rehab. Right. Because the rehabs take anywhere from two and a half to six months, depending mm-hmm. on... on Lots of factors there. Um, Mark can do a lot in six months. Sure. We're, we're sitting in the middle of a six-month cycle right now um, with interest rates. So, um, And then right before we list them for rent, we go back one more time. And we say, okay, Mark, this is where I call you. Right, Mark, hey, man, what do you think this property is going to sell for? Right. This is what I'm thinking for rents. Mm-hmm. Do I need to – should I go up a little bit? Do we need to maybe make concessions on where we're pricing it? So that way we make sure that the numbers look good if it went if and when it rents. And then right. we have – actually, we have a meeting every – twice a week to go over those pro formas and the market and what uh, people are saying when they're viewing properties during leasing to see if we need to adjust prices, if we need to concede on a few things, or what needs to happen in order to make this a good experience for our buyers and our clients long term. Right. Um, that's been a game changer. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, that decision is less for us than it is for our buyers. Sure. Uh, because it's important that if you buy a $150,000 property or more or less, that it performs the way we sold it. Sure. And one of the uh, perfect examples of, of how those number uh, numbers changed over over time with a longer rehab was the other one that I brought, and that was right. our our eight twenty Dayton Street. It's in Hamilton. Right. Um, this one is in what they consider the oil light district. Um, it's a historic district, of, a historic of, district Hamilton. of Hamilton, and so you know. Um, rehabbers know that you know purchasing in historic districts can be a challenge because there's a lot of permitting uh, things for external you know the way the home looks so when this home was originally uh, set in a pro forma we had it slated to be a retail um, because the value of the homes in that area were higher than the rents at the time in order for the the cap numbers and and things to even be attractive for our investors. Over the time that it took for this home to to be rehabbed and, and permitted correctly, the rents had gone up almost $200, $250 in that area alone. Right. And so the, the value of the home was still going up a little bit, but I think we had it maybe, you know, around $155. <laughs> um, so the home now is is for sale. It's $165. Uh, it's a four-bedroom two bath, it's a big house, you know, like I said, in the historic district there, um, it was probably pretty easy to rent and, and we rented it for 1600. Yep. I mean, that's a, I mean, we're talking, so, so according to my numbers here, that's a $520 a month on one house, right? 9.2, you know, cap rate again with the, uh, 16% cash on cash. Again, Three years into the future, just think what those rents might climb to. Right. Because this, this I, I think this rehab took us almost a year. Right. So uh, just think, that went up 250 bucks in rent over just that year. Now a lot's happened, obviously, but you'd have to think, what's going to happen three years from now? The value of this home is going up. The rents are going up. And let's just say rates drop. Even if rates don't drop, 
Right. You're locked in on making at least $500 a month. <laughs> right, exactly. You're locked in, so it doesn't matter. Rates could go to 15. It doesn't matter because I own this property and I'm making $500 a month minimum. Right. And then as rates go up. So if I can rent this for 1,700, I'm now making $600 a month. So it just, you know, it just it just goes to show that you know, the longer you sit on the sideline, a lot of things can change. You know, the value of the property, the cap rates, the cash flows. Whereas if you decide to, you know, be aggressive and, you know, address your fears and concerns, you know, with us, mm. review the numbers, you know, come to me, ask me any questions you have about fears, concerns, the area, whatever. Let's let's get them all out of there. And then once you feel safe and ready to go, you know, you start investing. These are things that year over year have shown to perform. Right. Yeah. So, um, like, I love this nope. property. I mean, do you, <laughs> I mean, it's a good look. It's a good looking house. I, yeah, I was just yeah. down in Hamilton this morning. I was man. actually, I just remember, I remember when we, I was first brought in on uh, Dayton. I remember actually telling him that the $1,200 rents was a stretch. <laughs> right. Like, I was like, man, I think you were the one that actually called me on that one. You were like, man, I, I need to get 1200 I was like, dude, I'm seeing like 11, 11, 15 tops. Right. right. And you're like, I really need 1200 I'm like, I mean, I'm going to do what I can. And then the, here we are, you later, later talking about $1,600. And it did. It rented in like a week and a half or something. Like, and it moved in within two weeks. Like, it was insanely quick how that yeah. one flew. Um, you know, I was thinking while you are talking, though, about that. It was all good information. Um, you know, it's a good time to buy. We keep saying that. Um, but I want to kind of bring another perspective into it. Sure. Um, people need a place to live. Yeah. Um, the same insecurities and fears that our, our potential buyers might have about, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know, now it's a good time to buy. Um, it's not a good time to buy a PS5, right? <laughs> um, but when it comes to real estate, like the reason, one of the one of the many reasons why real estate's a good place to be um, is because right now the same insecurities that our buyers have about buying investments, homeowners are having about buying their first homes or their sure. second homes. Um, we're seeing an unprecedented number of people choosing to rent mm-hmm. instead of buy because they don't want to have the high interest rates. They right. don't want the, 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 the market they feel is inflated mm-hmm. or whatever reason they may have. Right. They're making a purchase decision out of fear, which our investors can actually capitalize on. Right? right. And I'm not saying that in a way to discredit my renters at all, but – they're making a decision to rent mm-hmm. because they don't, they're afraid to buy. In, sure. so, in some cases, not all cases. Some are just very much. Just, I'm a, I'm a lifetime renter, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's important to know. Right. Um, that means that at least for the next year, mm-hmm. you have somebody that's going to be in your property and renting it. Um, and then we talk about rent increases and stuff like that. Like this year was um, was. Uh, Rent increases were pretty significant. Um, obviously, the market went up quite a bit. Um, so there were some gaps we had to close on, on market rates. Mm-hmm. Um, next year, I projected it will be a little bit slower, right. just a little bit, um, because the we are in a recession mm-hmm. by definition. Um, we have to have the let the economy catch up a little bit with some things that are happening. Um, but I'm still projected like a – a six plus percent increase, right. um, probably pushing closer to ten percent. To be honest, would that also like would it be fair to say? And again, here's here, you know possible ignorance here is like is it fair to say that right now, like because the rental demand is so high, mm-hmm. you're getting the highest, so it's hard to push high higher. Yeah, you know when you're already at right. it because I know you know sometimes when I talk to investors they'll ask me the question you know so what what do you think rents will go to next year again right. I don't have a crystal ball I know you don't as well right you know we can we can take a look at trending numbers and make that call but you know when the demand is high right now and the rents high it's hard to push right. high higher <laughs> it is hard to push high higher but um, I will say that we are setting rents. Okay, so we do market analysis many different ways for rents. Um, sure. I'm talking more rent comps right now, not sales comps. Though they're kind of similar in how you analyze them. Uh, rent comps, 
it's not as simple as just going to Rentometer or any other tool right now and right. pulling an average. Like we have to dive into the numbers, we have to dive into the comparable properties, really look at what we're trying to compare, right. knowing that there's product and finish differences, the assets are different, mm-hmm. um, different builders, different renovators, different homeowners, a whole, like uh, two properties on the same block can be completely different. Yep. Right. So knowing those and taking those factors in, where is a happy medium on rent where we can still be competitive, but not the top person? So though I appreciate the compliment that we're top market, <laughs> we're close. Right. Um, so a perfect example is we have a property coming soon. Um, those of you watching, you're going to see this probably come up um, in our emails soon. Probably in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be pushed out for sale. Um, well. I'll say within the next month or so, it's been for sale. It's Helen Street in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, that one is one that we did. We've done rent comp several times. Um, I just this week bumped the rent like $600 before we listed it. Nice. Um, and that $600 bump puts it in like to a $2,600 price range. And even then, like it probably could go up another two or 300 Wow. But – because there's not a lot of comparables immediately next to it, uh, I don't want to necessarily risk that, right? Because sure. I have to be able – in a worst-case scenario, if a tenant only stays for six months, eight months, or a year and they have to move out, I have to re-rent it next year, right? right. So I'm also thinking about that experience further, further down the road than today. Um, I have to be able to re-rent it. The cool thing about properties like Helen, though, is that I know that we're going to be higher than a lot of properties in the area – but the other properties in the area are going to catch up. Yeah. And it may not be this year. It might not be next year. Sure. But there's going to be a point where $2,600 is a wink. Right. In a big bucket. Right? Mm-hmm. So we're going to be able to push that higher. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what we talk about. Small increase. There's always a small increase on rent. It's where those big increases happen is when we've now – um, everybody else is catching up to where we're setting. Right. Um, so Dayton was an interesting one. Um, I'm not sure if the bump was because of that or if it was just job growth, uh, market growth, um, more properties selling the area. Right. I have seen more properties in Hamilton in the last year than mm-hmm. we had previously, so that just might be it too. Well, that um, whole area, you know what I mean, with, with the spooky nook, you know, sports yeah, complex going that's down true. there. Yeah. So, so again, that that's going to bring people. I mean, who knows? I mean, them, you might consider short term rentals. You know, down the road, down there. Who knows? <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a little more dangerous than you know having monthly uh, yeah. income versus you know something like that. But you know, again, with Prosser, you know, what I mean, I think that that one was a, a fairly quick rehab on that one. Um, but again, just being able to get that extra fifty bucks a month on that one, um, again, extremely affordable property. You know, one forty-five on this one. You know, when you're talking about, uh, it, it's that we're changing the neighborhood. You know, that uh, we're going in there, we're buying these houses and changing the market, and so things are starting to go up. Right. Um, and so I know that we're doing a better job of that. Uh, you know, on the acquisition side of the house is trying to buy properties in clusters in clusters close yeah. to other places because again that's that's only going to benefit our investors um, in the long term yeah and the overall market like uh, honestly I've personally had some conversations with municipalities about what we're trying to do and um, you know they love it they love the fact that we're that are, we have buyers from all over the place buying properties in those areas. Um, and a lot of them are willing to help us out through that process. So buying clusters is a good strategy. Also helps on the rental end a little bit too. Sure. Um, there's lots of situations we, uh, we may manage this property and the one across the street and the one a couple houses down, you know, right. um, that's helpful, especially when we're trying to manage from like a community aspect. Sure. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a uh... It's solid. I mean, these are all great conversational pieces just by themselves, right. let alone like trying to, you know, put it all into, you know, less than an hour or whatever of talking about like, you know, the advantages of real estate, how to, uh, you know, maybe guard against uh, market corrections and things like that. These are these are all valid points, you know, great properties. I'm so glad to see the changes that, that we've made uh, as a company. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think to recap, like to recap further, I should say, um, 
do your research. Right. Um, the things that Fox News and uh, random news outlets and articles that you read online not, not are necessarily all true, um, especially in this market. Right. Um, they may be true in like overinflated markets like California and New York and uh, maybe Dallas, you know, mm-hmm. areas where um, we're talking about a different beast entirely when it comes right. to real estate. But we're, specifically, we're talking about Ohio, Southwest Ohio, yep. um, Dayton, Cincinnati, Sp- uh, a little bit of Springfield. We're not quite in that market yet, at least yep. from Freedom's End. Um, Middletown, Hamilton, Franklin. Um, Franklin, all those areas. Southwest Ohio, um, pretty much the whole strip down at 75 and mm-hmm. 70, right? Um, we talk about that mar- our market specifically. Um, it's going up. Right. It's still moving up, still trending upwards. Right. Um, the actual value of the properties may decrease or fluctuate or whatever, mm-hmm. um, but rents are higher than they are have right. ever been. Um, the engagement of renters to rent like there's not enough rentals right. for the number of renters there are in our market. Yeah, um, it's definitely a time to be a landlord. Yep. Or I shouldn't say a landlord. Nobody wants to be a landlord. <laughs> it's definitely time to be an investor in right. real estate. Um, and there's definitely like good opportunities, not just even within uh, the two properties that we've mentioned, but like I think we're wholesaling one, mm-hmm. right? There are so those that want to dip their toe into mm-hmm. some uh, renovating. They can yeah, do that. I was say, yeah, <laughs> depending on what you're yeah. – you know, it's a whole other conversation. Yeah, obviously yeah. our bread and butter is the turnkey asset where we've done all the legwork and the hard work and we've done all the vetting and taken all the, the lashings and the licks right, for exactly. you. Right, um, but yeah, there's there's lots of good opportunity here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a strong market. You know, I mean, you're a realtor. I'm a realtor. You know, in the area, I think the only thing that we've maybe seen you know slow down is maybe uh, holding times. You know, what I mean, time yeah, times that true. things are listed. I think that if you, uh, as a realtor, list the property at the, at the correct price, it'll still sell. Um, <coughs> it just you know not might, like, not it, like two years ago when it, it would sell in two it hours. May, it, may, it may take more than a couple hours. Correct. Right? You yeah. may have to make one extra phone call, right? Exactly. But, uh, they do move. Um, I don't think we're suffering a lot of. I don't think we're suffering that much from that. I think a lot of it's just the fear of should I be buying right, right now with the interest rates the way they are. Um, historically, people aren't going to remember what happened 20, 30 years ago because they probably weren't buying houses at sure. that point, at least not from this type of perspective. So, um, yeah, it's all good stuff. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm excited about it. I mean, I come in every day excited yeah, about stuff. So I was gonna say, I come in, yeah. you know, and and I and I see the board on what's coming down the pipe and yeah. uh, what's available. So for our investors who you know either your first time watchers or or you know reengaging again, you know, welcome back. Um, you know, I mean, we have the new stuff here. You know, we have uh, again, you know, great rehab. Things are already being rented. You know, so all of those numbers are going to be real and, um, you know, lots of stuff. Like I said, we have a couple available properties now, you know, make sure that you stay tuned for the other stuff and, uh, right. you know, consider some of the things that we were talking about. Are, are these the things that uh, are in line with what your um, what you want to do for income? You know, whether this is to replace uh, a job or if it's just something that you you know, want some extra money for travel plans, uh, whether it's something you're passing off to your kids into the future, uh, all great, you know, ideas. So you just literally have to sit down, um, you know, do your homework, like you said, and come up with your plan. You know, where do you see yourself? You know, one year, five year, 10 year. And, um, you know, I'm more than happy to go over any of that with you. I know that Chris is available to speak to you at any time. And so we definitely appreciate everyone turning in. Absolutely. So uh, before we close, um, I do want to say uh, stay tuned. Um, I'm actually going to let Mark – I tend to let Katie know I was going to do this, so uh, surprise. Um, <laughs> but uh, stay tuned in the coming weeks. Uh, we're going to try to do a live, um, yep. uh, Facebook Live, uh, so hopefully before Christmas is our okay. goal. Um, so if there's any topics you want to talk about or questions you have that – you know, you want to have us answer on that, feel free to just drop them in comments or send us a message. Awesome. Um, we'll, we'll like, we want to engage with you and we want to talk about the things that you guys find are most important. Um, but for now, uh, Mark and I are going to sign off. Uh, we usually do that by saying invest smart and live happy.
Thank you. Thanks. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions and information on this show are not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss.